you said you'd come. Now let's hope you're not too late. Justice League is the fifth movie in the DC Extended Universe, but you can't really count Suicide Squad since it doesn't have any of these characters in that movie. Yeah, and this movie stars Ben Affleck, Gal Gadot, uh, Jason Momoa, Ezra Miller, uh, Amy Adams, and Ray Fisher. This movie is about a otherworldly being named Steppenwolf who is trying to find these three powerful items called the Mother Boxes. So Batman and his newfound ally, Wonder Woman, must band together and form the Justice League. So first of all, I want to point out that I did go as Robin to the, this movie. So I, I did have uh, black hair chalk in my hair. So it got a little bit all over my hands and on my face. So just warning, that's why. So yeah, like most of us know, uh, this movie is directed by two different people. Zack Snyder, who directed Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman. Uh, started off directing it, but um, as it turned out, his daughter actually committed suicide, so he had to step down and uh, be with his family. So Joss Whedon, who directed the first two Avengers movies, uh, stepped in and uh, finished production and actually rewrote a lot of scenes and reshot re a lot of them with a lot of the actors. So it's basically directed by two different people. Yeah, um, I think one of the, the problems, though, with this movie, which... It isn't really shown the directing because the directing is actually pretty well done. Yeah. I actually like the directing quite a bit. But uh, probably one of my main issues with this movie is, you know, Warner Brothers did say they made it to where uh, DC movies now can have to be they have to be under two hours. Yeah. And I really don't understand why. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think they've learned their lesson from Batman vs Superman and Suicide Squad that they don't have to mandate over these movies because. A lot of the things that they cut out, a lot of the things that they force DC to cut out, is just makes the movie not as complete as they should be. Mm -hmm. And it's really noticeable within the very beginning because a lot of the scenes. And what, one thing about these scenes is that they're actually pretty good scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually do actually tell you about some of the characters. They make you care about them, and which is very strange because I wasn't expecting it to turn out where I'd be able to learn more about the characters. Mm -hmm. uh, but even though I like what was in the scenes what was in between the scenes like the the uh, transitions mm -hmm. it just felt weird because a lot of the scenes kind of felt like they were just cut off yeah you could uh you could it got to a point where you could be like okay that's where they probably cut out a couple of seconds that's you, it became sort of obvious that's like they had to cut the scene short mm -hmm. then it probably lasted a little longer but they had to cut it down to get under two hours yeah and i think i think uh what probably is dc's biggest issue right now is they're trying too hard to compete with Marvel, and I understand they're like a competing company, but they don't need to push this competition because they're going to make money off the movies. Right. You know, they don't need to make this big team up movie just because Avengers had already made uh, yeah. two team up movies and then a uh, Civil War with all the with all the uh, superheroes in it. They just need to make their own movies, you know, have movies that establish the characters. Because for Avengers, and I don't want to say, I don't want to make it sound like we're just these big fanboys of Marvel. Because I, I truly feel like DC could be fantastic. I feel like they could be even better than Marvel, mm -hmm. easily, Marvel easily. Um, but they just try too hard to to catch up. Mm -hmm. Because before this, uh, we had. Uh, we had two movies with Superman, a movie with Batman, and a movie with Wonder Woman. Yeah, that's three of the six characters. Yeah, and so uh, with Avengers, you had a movie that had, it for every single character, except for, you didn't have a movie for Hawkeye, and you didn't have a movie for uh, Black Widow, but Black Widow was highly established in Iron Man 2, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, you had Hawkeye, and... He was uh, in the first Thor movie. Yeah, he was in the so first he, Thor. All, all the Avengers were in yeah. the previous movies. And, you know, you could easily just establish more of Hawkeye's character in the mm -hmm. Avengers, which they did very well. Right. So, I mean, that's one of their biggest issues that they have going for them. Yeah, and... I honestly think if even if they kept like if they went their own pace, they still would have made the sa about the same amount of movies or I mean the same amount of money as they did by rushing. Like if they released solo movies 
and it took their time, they still would have made the same amount of money as they did the way they did. And all that was really surprising because of all the fact that all this movie had to do because this movie had to establish several of the characters it had to establish the villain it had to give you a reason to care about the characters it had to give you a reason to care for the villain and what he was doing and to have them join together and then fight the villain it was it it had a lot of things that it really you know had it was a, kind of a hindrance to the quality for the movie yeah and another thing that they did uh talking talk about the marvel versus dc sort of deal uh, the tone in DC movies has really changed a lot from Man of Steel, which is the first movie in this universe. Because uh, start, they start off serious movies, obviously, but now they've gotten to a point where uh, you know critics have bashed them for being too dark and too serious and everything, and not being like Marvel. Like I've seen actual reviews where people, where critics have said that they didn't have the Marvel feel to it, so they sort of had to like adapt mm -hmm. as they go. And this movie, you can really tell that they've done a lot of changes to the tone. And um, they've added a lot of comedy to this one. And I'm not going to say it was, it was like bad comedy, but I feel like a lot of times they try to make a joke and it didn't really land well. Like It, didn't, it wasn't as funny as they thought it was going to be. And another thing is I think they put a lot of the funnier parts in the trailer, which it can't, I can't really knock points off of the movie itself for that, but they did put a lot of the funny, funnier parts I think I would have laughed at harder if I wouldn't have seen them already in the trailer. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the other jokes that they had, the rest of the jokes didn't land well at all. I, I actually did like the comedy. Um, I thought that Ezra Miller's character was funny. I felt like... The Flash almost got to the point of being annoying, but mm -hmm. he got he got right before that level. Like right. he, his character was not annoying, but it almost got there. I, liked, I did like the Flash's character. Most of the comedy did come from the Flash, but um, all the other comedy, I felt like there wasn't a lot of it, and I felt like it fit for. I felt like it was natural comedy. Yeah. Uh, like you said, like Marvel does a lot of comedy, but their com comedy doesn't fit a lot of times. Uh, but this movie, I felt like the comedy fit quite a bit. It fit really well, I thought, I felt like. Yeah, and talking about uh, the Flash character, uh, he was the the comedy, the comedic relief in this movie for the most part. But there were a couple of scenes where he had um, serious moments, especially when he's talking to his father at the beginning of the movie, who was in jail. And I feel like his um, his serious parts, he didn't. his acting wasn't that well. Uh, I liked his comedic parts, but his serious parts, I don't I didn't think I liked him that much. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll see when his movie comes out. Yeah. On, uh, was it like 2019 or something yeah. like that? But. Yeah, other than that, though, I felt like I really loved all the acting in this movie, especially from Ray Fisher as Cyborg. Mm -hmm. Ray Fisher, I mean, like, I don't know if I've seen him in anything. I don't mm -hmm. really know much about him. Uh, but his acting, his his voice was fantastic for Cyborg. Yeah. It, it felt like, it felt like, what he was like a mixture of a human and uh like a machine, machine. It, it his voice totally just like uh what was that and it totally encompassed that feel yeah and of course uh ben affleck did awesome as bruce wayne batman bruce wayne he really has progressed since batman vs superman uh kids in batman vs superman uh spoilers for that movie real quick uh he was killing people and uh, even though that movie kind of had a weird way of doing things, and it really explained why he was killing people. They gave, all they the gave way. a hint with the Robin suit, but they yeah. didn't really fully explain. Yeah, but this movie, you can tell that he's he's kind of had more uh, trust in humanity. He's kind of learned that there is good people, and he he kind of uh, he kind of becomes and he feels more like the Batman that we all know and love mm -hmm. instead of the bitter one. Uh, well, the well the well founded bitter one that was in Batman vs Superman. And then Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. Uh, in the Wonder Woman, she was more of a naive character because she's just coming into this world. And this one, in this movie, she's more of a strong, independent person. And she's like more used to Earth and being around people. Jason Momoa, I felt like he did well. Uh, but the character of Aquaman in this movie really didn't have that much going for him. Yeah. They didn't really... Like all the other characters, I they got me to care for him. They got me to... Uh, understand them as a person but i felt like um his character wasn't really wasn't really there he was just the character that they were trying to get on the team and they he didn't really have anything that made me care about him 
Now, there's not a lot of exposition scenes in this movie, but there was one very big exposition scene that's talking about uh, Steppenwolf and uh, his rise and you know what what happened to him. And I felt like that one was a was a little bit out of place. Uh, I felt like because what it was was it was like uh, Wonder Woman ha- was having like a conversation with Batman about it, and it kind of felt forced in the movie. It didn't mm-hmm. feel like it was fully. Sub- fully supposed to be there and especially the way it was happening because she'd be talking to Bruce Wayne and it'd go back and forth between her and then like showing Steppenwolf and what's happening and like if you imagine the fact that that scene wasn't actually playing while he was having a conversation oh, yeah. with Ben Affleck right. so she'd be just talking to him and all of a sudden she'd be like and then <laughs> this you know, oh, Steppenwolf yeah. did yeah. this and like you know like yeah. that's how she was talking that's how she was talking to right, Bruce yeah. Wayne all of a sudden yeah exactly and Steppenwolf is probably one of the weakest points of this movie for me. Um, him as a character wasn't very strong. He felt sort of weak. I mean, physically he was strong, but the writing for his character wasn't very strong. Uh, and he felt sort of like a side character, to be honest, because like, he didn't feel like a physical threat at times. Sometimes I even forgot that he was in this movie because yeah. he barely showed yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, same here. Um, and he honestly felt, uh, if I want to make some comparisons, he sort of felt like Ronan in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy um, with that he's this villain that's only there just to be an obstacle for the heroes mm-hmm. which is funny because they're both team up movies but that's that's who I compare him to and also sort of Malekith from uh, Thor the Dark World although I do think he was stronger than Malekith but I feel like he was in that sort of range where it's like he's just there to be a villain yeah and another character that kind of is like that with this movie is probably uh, Commissioner Gordon mm-hmm. uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, played by J.K. Simmons um his character was... It felt like he didn't need to be in the movie. It felt like his, his character had about two scenes in the entire movie. Maybe more. I mean, don't don't quote me on that. But that's all I remember is about two scenes. Yeah, which is sad because J.K. Simmons bulked up for that role. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, I guess all of his scenes that were shirtless yeah. were cut out of the movie. <laughs> and so... But one of his scenes was kind of just explaining what was happening. And it was kind of a scene that felt like, oh, we just need to have Commissioner Gordon say something in this scene. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, his character didn't really feel necessary. I felt like his scenes could have been replaced with something that gave us more depth than other characters or more depth than uh, Steppenwolf. Now, I actually did like uh, most of the story for this movie. It was very interesting. It really kept my attention throughout the entire movie. But I felt like a lot of plot points... Um, they kind of were not explained to us. And I understand the movie doesn't want to treat the audience like idiots, and I kind of respect that movie for this. But it could have also been like a lazy choice uh, just to get the story moving along. because, And also it could have just been scenes that were taken out in the cuts to, to make it less than two hours. But a lot of things, they just happened kind of. Instead of uh, explaining why or how they happened, they kind of just, they were just there and we had to just accept the fact that uh, someone found out about this or someone found their way to do this or mm-hmm. someone figured out this thing and we just had to just accept it. The CGI in this movie was, um, it, it, for the most part, it looked pretty good. Um, C- DC has a sort of feel with their CGI uh, where I, I can't really say that it's like bad, but it's not like great. It sort of has a video gamey feeling or look to it. But I mean, for the most part, it did look pretty fantastic for um, most of the scenes except for like sometimes it would look good but then they would put like a a real person or something real in front of the CGI to make it and look sort of off yeah this is a really beautiful looking movie just like um, Batman vs Superman or Wonder Woman it's really awesome looking Uh, but like uh, towards the end and it kind of goes it goes with the CGI towards the end and just a, a few other scenes in the movie uh, the background kind of looked, the color looked off. Yeah, it looked really red. Yeah, and, and, I'm, and I'm not going to say the people necessarily looked colored off, the color was off, but just the background. And also, probably one of my bigger issues with this movie was the music. I felt like the music was nothing spectacular. In fact, I barely remember any of it. You know, it never really, it never really set the full like a tone for the movie. And I'm talking about even Wonder Woman's theme song. I love Wonder Woman's theme song, but they played it once in this uh, movie. Yeah, it's it, very subtle. It's, like, yeah, it's very subtle and played with uh, a, like a very kind of smoother instrument. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and it didn't really, 
I didn't really feel like the uh, the adrenaline or just that feeling you got when you listen to Wonder Woman's theme song for the first time, or even uh, in her movie. It doesn't really give you that feeling. Which is which is yeah no I, I agree, but it's even weirder to think because Danny Elfman was the one who did the music for this movie, and he even brought back his uh, Batman theme for this movie. And I, I do agree with you. It's not the soundtrack wasn't very memorable as the other DC movies have been. All right, and now, guys, we're going to talk about a little bit of spoilers right now. Uh, so if you haven't seen this movie or if you don't want to hear spoilers, you can go to this timestamp right here and uh, hear our grades. So here we go. Spoilers. Um, so at the end, uh, when Superman is resurrected, uh, I actually loved Superman's character in this movie. Um, honestly, I've always liked Superman's character in the DCEU. Uh, in Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman, a lot of people didn't like his character because they thought he was too, too uh, gloomy and too down. Not the hopeful Superman that we all know. But I honestly thought the way that the writing was, it made the character relatable. I mean, he's this pretty much godlike creature on this planet who loves humans, but at the same time, these humans like hate a lot of these humans hate him and want him off this planet. So it was like a it, w it wouldn't make sense for him to be like all happy mm. so it made sense for him to be down but i love the arc that this these three movies have given superman so now he's g getting to be this character who's like hopeful and has like a lot of charisma in him because now he's like resurrected he knows that this is his place that, that he belongs here so he's getting to be this happy character happy bright character now yeah what's awesome is i actually kind of address that in this movie mm -hmm. uh whenever i think uh, batman's talking to wonder woman mm -hmm. uh no uh yeah he's talking to wonder woman and she uh he's no she sorry he she's he's talking to um to alfred yeah and uh they're explaining why that they need superman right and they're wondering why he needs superman and he says that superman is even more human than he was right because uh you know, uh, Bruce Wayne grew up in this rich household, so he mm. didn't get the uh, human experience that Superman got. Mm. You know, he felt like Superman got to live life. He got the, he said he got to fall in love. He got to go through life, and he truly became more human because of this. Yeah, and that's that's why I don't understand the complaints that people have about Superman's character in the previous two movies because the fact that they took a character who is completely unrelatable with all the powers that he has, and they actually made him like. A human ma made him so relatable, and that's what I loved about it. Now he's has his arc, and it's great to see. And if one thing I really loved about this movie was uh, how Steppenwolf was defeated, because he was defeated because uh, his his uh, creature, or, yeah, his parademons, his army. Uh, yeah, his army, uh, they fed off of fear, mm -hmm. and so uh, at the end he started getting scared, or he started feeling fear because yeah, the, the Justice just, League was defeating him. Yeah, and so they all attacked him because mm -hmm. they're feeding off of his fear. I did like that. I liked it a lot. Uh, the um, idea. Yeah, the idea. But what I didn't like. Uh, was the fight scene was just so short. Mm. And it probably would have been longer. And I understand that some fight scenes are way too long, mm. but this one felt just... It, it, like the in, it wasn't anticlimactic, mm. but because of how short it was, it felt like they didn't really feel that much resistance against Steppenwolf. They didn't yeah, really feel and, that much. Yeah, and uh, to go along with what you're saying, because um, he was able to steal, all, like throughout the movie, he was able to steal these... Uh, mother boxes from giant armies of like the Amazons and the uh, people at, in Atlantis. Um, they were, he was able to steal all of them pretty easily, like without much of a fight. And then, so at the end, when he's against the Justice League, which of course they got Superman back at the end, but at the same time, it just like, they defeated him like way too easily. So this movie is actually very good. I loved it a lot, especially considering I didn't think I was gonna like it because you know of the rush that's been and then the two hour mark that uh, DC was given. Uh, but I actually liked it a lot, you know, but it had its uh, major issues and it had its minor issues, but it was still very enjoyable. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that the Justice League is 80% awesome. Yeah, I definitely enjoyed it, but I would probably still put it at fourth out of the five DCEU movies behind Man of Steel, Batman vs Superman and Wonder Woman, but still light years above Suicide Squad. So I'm not going to say it's a horrible movie by any standards, 
but uh, it did feel like it could have been a lot better if it hadn't been condensed down to two hours. So I'm going to say that Justice League is 70% awesome. Well, guys, I hope you like this video. Uh, we are trying this new style where we're trying to have more of a conversation to make the videos feel more natural so they're a little bit more easy to watch because in our other videos, we do have these jump cuts that we're not a huge fan of. Uh, so go ahead and comment below and uh, let us know what you think about that. Uh, also, tell us what you think about uh, this movie and also what is your favorite DC movie so far? If you want to, you can rank the five that have already come out uh, below. Also, uh, don't forget to like and share this video. And don't forget to follow us on social media. We have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at Two Awesome Men. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and you will see us later.